applies to any scratch unless you're trying to give it some particular sound. Um, if you want to articulate the scratch well, you need to be able to control from this point to say your chirps, you want to go that far. So you want to go from 2 o'clock to is that about 3.15. So you need to be able to articulate your record hand well, you know what I mean? You need to be able to control it. So make sure that you're only going so far forward and so far back and try to clean them up as much as possible. Yeah. So okay. give that a quick whirl bro. And can we all, all jump up and try to do some chips? Chip, chip, chip. Slow. So we'll go around the table. <laughs> I'll set, I'll set a pattern and we'll go around the table and we'll all try and move I just want to ask one question. Yeah. Are you sure you, you were wanting to do a chirp or not a flare? Because you did, did some flares? Yeah, flares I, don't, I don't need the flares, but then... Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Because I haven't, like, to be honest, I haven't cut for, like, almost two years. Cause I, just ah, do, like, yeah. I haven't even touched turntables for, for ages. So yeah, yeah. Since I was all this, I thought, oh, I'll jump on this because nice. I would just do, like, corporate stuff and that. So yeah, I yeah. Do any other stuff. Yeah. I mean, one, um, uh, with the corporate stuff, it's a little bit harder as well, I, I understand, but like so for me as well, my whole goal for the turntablers and, and these workshops too is to try and push people to do this in their more regular sets also. Yeah. So it's like, you know, your normal club sets and stuff like that. Utilize it. I mean, obviously, tastefully, don't just get up there and just do some scratches. Cause it's about doing it all tastefully and, and yeah. correctly. But um, basically, try and, try and get away with cuts and weak and I'm really bad with chirps as well. Like I always unlearn them and then you know, chirps are really hard to get the technique really clean always. Yeah. <laughs> Carisco, do you wanna um I'll check out record what side do you cut on left or right? You haven't right. decided yet? Right. Oh jump jump up. You've got a left one here that you go by after him or a right one after him. What side do you cut on? Uh, I'll cut it too well, maybe on the left hand side. Okay, you can jump here. What? First of all, it's what important is, that you... What, you what is the trip? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. You want to break down the trip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, if chirps are new, so we'll, we'll quickly break down the chirp. The chirp is essentially uh, the very start of the waveform. So if you guys, have you opened a digital audio workstation before, like Ableton or Logic? Oh, you've opened Serato, right? So in Serato, you look at the waveform, we'll look at it sideways quickly. Um, actually, no, if you're not in a digital audio workstation, we can work it like this. Don't worry about it. I'm talking to myself. I do this a lot, don't worry. Um, so essentially we have this, the ah uh, sound that we all know and love or hate, love-hate relationship. Now, what the chirp is is that you have the crossfader in the middle is your first open fader scratch you learn normally. So you have the crossfader set in the middle and as you as you move forward into the sound, you, chip, you chop it off and as you bring, come bring it back, you come back, you open the fader back up. So you're essentially only getting just the start of that sound Depends on when you close it, but you typically want just the start and it gives a nice clean chirp sound going forward and then when you come back. So this is where, like I was saying, first we've got to make sure you come back out of the sound. So if you think of your record, the sticker on your record, that being there, where there's no sound, it's just dead line flat, nothingness. Now that's where you want that, and then as you go forward, and it depends on how far forward you move the record, you might only move it that far forward, which means it only makes it that far forward the sound, which is going to change the way that that chirp sounds. And you can change as you go to, uh, to give different rhythms. So you could go from, I've got a set at 2 o'clock here, I go forward, I go to, let's go to 4, and then come back to 2, and then if I go to 3, so I go... Because within the same time, you're just moving the record faster. So the chirp is as you move the record forward, close it. As you move it back, you open. That's the one you explained last time, like it's like the noise of a seal. Yeah. Oh, not the noise of a seal. So if you think, if they, uh, Gula showed me this actually. If you go um, and have your hand on the record, 
you have your crossfader open, the movement is like a like a, a cartoon seal, like ar, 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 whatever. Like if you just think of that's the movement. So you're going out, in. It's a nice smooth movement. Same.